So what we need to do is go directly to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 11. Proverbs 4, 11. And when you're there, give me an amen. Proverbs 4, 11. Proverbs 4, 11 will teach us how to operate in the wisdom of God. Proverbs 4, 11. In Proverbs 4, 11, it will give us instructions how to operate in the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God. We all need wisdom. Praise the Lord. What is wisdom, Pastor? Wisdom is knowing what to do when you face a situation. A lot of us think, well, I got a problem, and that problem is uh, health. No, you don't have a health problem. You have a wisdom problem. Well, how's that? Well, find out about that stuff that trespassed you. And everything that trespassed you, for every dilemma, there is a solution. That's what the Lord wants to use me to say to you. For every dilemma, for every situation, there's a solution. So how can you claim something that is universal, a disease that is universal? I have high blood pressure. My blood pressure, your blood pressure, that's not your blood pressure, okay? That's a universal disease. That's a trespasser. So find out what you need to do to take care of yourself in that area and then do it. Don't complain about something that you're tolerating. Don't complain about it. There's a solution to everything. Oh, I can't afford that. Maybe. I know we are all in a budget, but there are ways that we can do certain things in a certain way, certain time, goals, plans, and we can get what we desire. So really, we don't have a money problem. We have a wisdom problem. We don't know, we don't know how to operate in wisdom. What is the difference between the smart, and I'm going to be a little bit incorrect right now, and the stupid. Wisdom. The smart have keys that the dummy don't have. For whatever reason, that dummy didn't want to learn. Okay? So wisdom has to be taught to you from God. And in Proverbs 4.11 says, I have taught you in the way of wisdom then look what wisdom does. It leads you. But if you're a stubborn and you want to be a stubborn mule, you'll never be led because we know it all. And I'm always right. You're wrong and I'm right. Two type of people you cannot help out, family. This is a good key. You should write it down. Those that feel they don't have a problem. You can never help a person that feel, I don't have a problem. At least if you ask me, why you do this, I'll give you, an, I'll give you an answer. This is why I do this. Now live your life, and I'm going to live my life. Okay? Thank you. Like my dad used to say, if you're not going to live my death, don't try to live my life. Don't try to tell me how to do it. Praise the Lord. What's good for you is good for you. What's good for me is good for me. And I have decided to be taught by wisdom. Because wisdom will lead me a lot better than you will or I can. See? That's why the Bible says, Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered our hearts the things that God has for us. So operating in wisdom has to be taught. No one can operate something if they're not taught. Praise the Lord. Then this wisdom, this understanding, because wisdom will become understanding. But listen to this. Patty, before we can get understanding, we have to have awareness. 
You have to have awareness. I have a situation, and the only one that can fix this situation is the person inside of me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I wonder who that is. Jesus. Do you know that Jesus became wisdom so that you can be taught and led? How many of us really know that Jesus is wisdom? Well, I like just saying it because it makes me feel good. No, let's back it up with scripture. The word of God is wisdom. Praise the Lord. Now that you went to Proverbs 4, uh, 11, why do you need wisdom? Because wisdom will teach you the way and will lead you to the right path. That's the answer. Why do I need wisdom? I don't need wisdom. You need wisdom. See? I don't have a problem. You have a problem. Two types of people you can't help. Those that feel they don't have a problem. Oh, and those that feel you're my problem. You're telling me what to do. I'm not telling you what to do. You do whatever you want to do. Praise the Lord. I don't tell you what to do. I only can lead by the example. Praise the Lord. Why you're upset? Because my example is different than your example and your surrounding? Well, that's good because I wasn't made to fit in. I was made to stand out. Praise the Lord. And you can't build anything with people that just wants to fit in. Same old, same old, year after year. Jesus is new every day. Praise the Lord. How many of us understand that we really need wisdom? Because it gets hectic at home. It gets hectic. You heard the word I said, hectic. And this world will knock you out. This world will hit you a lot harder than I can hit you or anyone else can hit you. Everyone has been knocked out by the world. Just get back up, praise the Lord. Don't stay down. How do I get back up, pastor? I need wisdom. Wisdom will tell me how to do it. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 4.11 again. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right path. Before I show you that Jesus became wisdom for you and I, let's go to verse, uh, verse Proverbs 4, 7. Let's go to Proverbs 4, 7. We're in Proverbs, so let's go up to 7. Just, you know, go up, go up, go up. So Proverbs 4, 7 tells us, Praise you. Now let's tap into this wisdom. Proverbs 4.11 allows us to operate in wisdom. Now let's learn how to tap into it. You can't operate in something that you have not tapped into. See, I need awareness. Awareness. Awareness will take me to a place of understanding. I can't be wasting my time and looking at everything around me that doesn't pertain to me. If I'm going to be the answer for God, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to hit the mark, if I'm going to work my purpose, I have to be aware, why am I, why am I here in this earth? Praise the Lord. I, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I cannot entertain you See, I don't have time for that. This is what you have to say to yourself. I don't have time for that. Someone tries to argue with you. I'm sorry, I don't feel comfortable right now talking to you. I'll talk to you later when, I, when my mind is right. See, what did I say before? Only a fool looks for revenge. Are you hearing me loud and clear? So stop playing the fool. You may think you're not playing the fool, but you look like a fool. Somebody say this with me three times. Deliver me from foolishness, Lord. Deliver me from foolishness, Lord. Deliver me from foolishness, Lord. Don't you know that you're alive because God has something more important for you to do than you wasting your time that he's giving you? Does everybody hear me loud and clear? You don't have time for that nonsense. God said he's made you because you are the apple of his eyes. Praise the Lord. Look how valuable you are. Instead, we allow certain things to come and disrupt us, and we lose our wisdom, because the enemy loves to steal your wisdom. And now we're walking around in foolishness. A fool looks for revenge. A smart man just stays quiet. I don't know this. I'm going to stay quiet. I'm not going to say anything. 
But a wise person just walks away. I'm not dealing with that. Sorry. <laughs> See you later. And just leave that nonsense there. Because you got two buckets, one with gasoline and one with water. Some fire, you just can't turn it off with water. Those that have a ear, let them hear and let them say amen. amen. And because you don't have a fire extinguisher on you, or do you? Sorry, it's not my fire. Sorry, this is not my circus. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not your monkey. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing. What is the principal thing? I asked the Spirit of God, what is the principal thing? What, what? Is everything, everything is the principal thing? He says, no. No, son, what I'm trying to say here, it's, it's, it cannot be compared to anything else. Because wisdom will give you everything you need. You cannot compare with anything else. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Look what he's telling you. Get wisdom. Because wisdom is like a hidden treasure. And you have to seek for it. In fact, wisdom will only come to those that seek, ask, and pursue it. Seek, ask, and pursue it. If I'm not in a place mentally that I understand that i got to seek it, When you first got your iPhone or whatever phone you got, what do you, I can't deal with this, and now you're dealing with it, aren't you? You had no other alternative but to learn how to turn the silly phone on and how to play with it. Somebody give me an amen. You decided to pursue wisdom. Wisdom will cry out, here I am. But you have to be the one hungry to say, I want to embrace you. I need you in my life. Wisdom is a biblical solution. Wisdom is a solution to your problem. That's why the writer is saying wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And look what it says. And in all you're getting, it doesn't tell you, get money, get cars, get house, get material things. It says get understanding. Because with understanding, you can keep what God gives you. Praise the Lord. Without understanding, it'll just go right through your hands. And you'll say, where is it? You didn't get understanding. But I say, under the unction of the Holy Spirit, it's wisdom, awareness, understanding. <laughs> you have to be aware wait a minute, I can't do this and I'm not going to spend this because, gee, I remember when I was so broke I couldn't pay attention. So now that I have two dimes that I can rub together, how can I make these two dimes work for me? I ain't getting no help here, but I know I'm teaching the Word of God. Praise the Lord. I really don't need your amen. How can I get these two dimes to work for me. Because I've been working all my life for two dimes. Now it's time for me to make the two dimes work for me. I need wisdom. Because I can stay all day long with the two dimes. And I won't have a clue. But when you get wisdom, and wisdom come, wisdom will lead you and instruct you. Praise the Lord. That's why, write this down if you're taking notes, and if you're not, then you have a wonderful memory. God's wisdom is the highest manifestation. I can do all things through wisdom. Praise the Lord. Oh, Jesus, I, I thought it was Jesus. Jesus is wisdom. And you know what's so sad? That the body of Christ don't understand that they have wisdom inside of but no one never taught them. He's in, he lives inside of you. You ready? Please. 1 Corinthians chapter 30, verse 1. He lives inside of me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. 
Put it up on the screen, please. Wisdom lives inside of me. From this day forward, I'll never be stupid again. Somebody say that with me. From this day forward, don't be afraid because if you stay shut, you'll stay stupid. From this day forward, I'll never be stupid another day of my life. Praise the Lord. Because wisdom is inside of me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Who praise his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. You know, pride will kill you. Pride will kill you. Don't give you nothing. It don't give you anything. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. The Bible says, but of him. You are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. You are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. Now everyone that has wisdom inside of them, Right now, say, Jesus, praise the Lord. Jesus. Say it like you really mean it. You better wake up. Jesus, praise the Lord. Come on, get the stupid out of you and let the, let the Jesus flourish out of you. Jesus, praise the Lord. You know how to read what it says. Jesus, praise the Lord, became wisdom for you and me. Don't say you have, I don't know how to do this. Don't give the devil credit. Don't you know what he does? He wants to do everything he can to keep you stupid. Because if he can keep you stupid, he can keep you in sin. I said it loud and clear. If he can keep you stupid, he'll keep you in bondage and sin. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm, why? Why? That person doesn't even know that you're upset with them. Go talk to them. But be, but be ready when that person starts opening up to you and tells you your bad mannerism. Because it works both ways. If I want to call you fat, I better get ready to be called baldy. Don't you hear what the Lord is saying to you? Let wisdom dwell inside of you. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness, sanctification, redemption, praise the Lord. It's cover right there. The whole thing is cover. Brenda, it's cover. We have no excuse to be stupid. No excuse. Praise the Lord. This wisdom will guide you. This wisdom will lead you. This wisdom will teach. This wisdom will help you become a witness for Christ. Yes, sir, I hear you loud and clear. Listen, listen, listen. Praise you, Father. I love you. Yes, I'll say that to them. All of you... A lot of you want to become leaders. You think it's easy. But you don't know how to witness first. When you learn how to witness, then you'll become a leader. And then when you qualify to become a leader, then you become a commander. Praise the Lord. That's how the Bible works. Witness, leader, commander. Did you hear me? Why do you think Jesus went out looking for disciples? And then those disciples became apostles. If I had one more person than Reverend George telling me amen, it'll make the Holy Spirit real happy. Praise the Lord. We sit here like we're really cute. I know this pastor. Good for you. Then go out and witness to the Lord. Jesus is waiting for you to tell someone, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is great. Like that elder told me, oh, pastor, I love you. Chicken is good, but Jesus is great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, Jesus is good. He said, Jesus? Chicken is good. Jesus is great. <laughs> Boy, he was right. That old elder, he was right. Praise the Lord. Jesus is great. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. Write it down if you're taking note. But according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, Jesus is your wisdom. Now I'm going to ask you, and I want you to tell me, 
Who is your wisdom? I love you. Who is your wisdom? Who is your wisdom? And if anybody tell you any different, tell them, mm -mm 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 -mm. go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Let me see. The word been around for over 2,000 years. How old are you? Yeah, you're a liar, and I'm going to believe the truth, okay? Go trick someone else, dopey. Somebody say amen. You got to be sometimes strong. Stand on your two feet. Everybody want to tell you how to do it. And they don't even know where they're going. I asked uh, Pastor uh, V, V, what's the number one rule when you read a map? Because I know he's a map reader. I know he's all his life. Most of you here. You got to know where you at. How are you going to go if you don't know where you at? I like to go to New York tomorrow. I like to go to Detroit tomorrow. Where are you? Well, I don't have a clue. You're in Florida, dummy. I, I, yeah, oh, yeah. This is not Miami. No, it's not Miami. It's Florida. Miami's all the way in the south. That's where all the brothers and the sisters get real dark. <laughs> Miami, right? Okay, how light you are, go to Miami, you get dark and shiny. Because heat down there, praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. God's giving you an opportunity right now so that you can dwell in wisdom. Not only dwell in wisdom, but operate, tap into it, praise God. Allow this divine wisdom, praise the Lord, guide you. And divine, this divine wisdom direct you, praise the Lord. Let us all learn how to function in wisdom, praise the Lord. Before you get upset, put the brakes on, park your car, and say, what will wisdom do? Now everybody tell me who is wisdom? Jesus. So what are you going to say before you get upset? What will wisdom do? In a matter like this, when you open up your wallet and you ain't got two pennies in it, talk to the wallet and say, what will wisdom do? I'll tell you what wisdom did. Wisdom, praise the Lord, was in the wedding and the wine finished. And his mother Mary came to him and said, Jesus, the wine finished. And Jesus said, what do you want? What does that got to do with me here? She says, there's no wine. And you know wine is fine, even though they say liquor is quicker. Jesus, ain't no holy wine in this place. He looked at his mother Mary, because this is Mary, and he just looked at her. Then she turned around and told the servant, whatever he tells you, listen, listen, this is wisdom. Whatever, you're too cute, you're too cute, and you're going to stay broke. If you're cute, you'll stay broke. You know where brokenness is? Up here. I'm getting too old for this. I'm gonna stop it. Just stop it. Is the Spirit of God talking to somebody? Just stop it and get in position. She told the servant, whatever he tells you to do, Jesus, wisdom, do it. That means if Jesus would tell him, put a lampshade on your head and start dancing the coochie coochie, do it. Who cares what anybody said? <laughs> Jesus is talking to you. You better learn how to hear from him and, and cherish it. Praise the Lord. We're hearing about everybody else but except the Lord Jesus Christ. Did Jesus tell you to do that? And if he didn't tell you to do it, don't do it. That's where you're failing. You're not going to wisdom. You know what Jesus did? He told the guy, get a couple of vases. Fill them up with water. And then dip the, the, uh, the spoon and give some of it to the headmaster. The guy drank, the, drank it. The water became wine. Wisdom, Jesus, turned water into wine. Now, don't you think he can take your broke wallet and put some money in it? Praise the Lord. Don't you think he can take your sickness and disease and put health and life and longevity? If he did it with wine. See, we read things, but we don't read it. We're like, oh, how nice. Don't you think he could do it with you? In fact, I want everybody here to say, Jesus. Come on, help me, help me, help me. He ain't going to come here if you don't, you don't open your mouth. Jesus, make me into new wine. Praise the Lord. Now I hear him. 
Jesus, make me into new wine. Praise the Lord. And the master, the head master of the feast, he came up to him, sister, and he said to him, you know, I, I've been in a lot of, you know, I've been in a lot of fancy places and weddings and all that. And, you know, you know what they do? They, they come out with the best wine at first, and they save the, the junk for last. Once everybody's drunk, ain't nobody going to know if it's good wine or not. But you, Sir Jesus, you left the best for last. Come on, somebody should just wave at him right now. Thank you, Father, for leaving me for last. You have a plan for me. Praise the Lord. That's why I, uh, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor, did, nor has it entered in the heart. And man, what God wants to do with you. But today, because wisdom is coming out of you. Wisdom always been with you. You're always calling him. You just didn't know he was wisdom. He's the problem to your solution. Say this with me. Jesus is the problem to the solution. Jesus is the solution to the problem. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Jesus is the solution. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you know what 1 Corinthians chapter 1 first, first Corinthians chapter 1 30 tells me? As long as I have Jesus, then I have the wisdom of God. What a great revelation. Everybody that receive awareness on that one, just say amen. Amen. The word has to be taught. You mean I always had wisdom inside of me? You always did, and I always did too. We just didn't know. Praise the Lord. I didn't know I had wisdom of, the wisdom of God inside of me. I didn't know that. I didn't know Jesus was wisdom. I didn't know that. Now, write this down. The revelation will require preparation. The revelation that you got today that Jesus is your wisdom requires preparation. That means you have to walk in it. Now that I have this understanding, you know that Jesus is my wisdom? Now, this revelation requires preparation. So I have to go through the process. I have to prepare myself to understand more. Praise the Lord. And how do you do that? How, do I, how can I do that, Pastor? Uh, Deacon Rory, it starts by you adoring him. Every morning when you get up, adore him. Adore him. Adore him. Can I get an amen here? Adore him. When you start adoring him, the doors will open. The, clo the door stays closed when you don't recognize him. We recognize more our pain and aches than we do God first. I don't have to get an amen. I know what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. So when we start adoring him, that is the beginning of us preparing ourselves for the wisdom of God. Like he said in Proverbs chapter 8, remember Pastor V said, Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22 tells you that before the earth was started, wisdom was there. Wisdom was, the, oh my God, don't you hear what I'm saying? Before the earth, before the water, before the stars, wisdom was with God. Now don't tell me wisdom can't help you. The problem is we embrace stupidity and we, and we shun wisdom. Because our pride is killing us. I know so much I don't know nothing. I can see so well that I can't see, I can see no further than my nose. Wisdom. Wisdom was already there. Christ, the wisdom of God, was the one that through, through him, through him, everything was made. I wish somebody get a revelation on this. You will come out of your situation so fast, you, won't, you don't understand. This is very powerful. You can't hear me in your flesh. You can't hear me with your mind. You got to ask the Holy Spirit right now. Let me hear in the spirit. I want to be free. I'm tired of doing time. And then all of a sudden, one day I expire from this body and I'm on the other side. What happened? Time's up, baby. That's what happened. Come on now. Wisdom. 
the word which the Father spoke, everything that was invisible, invisible became visible. God said stars, stars appear. God said trees and trees appear. God said rivers and rivers. God said man and man appear. God said woman and woman appear. Oh my God, I love wisdom. All was made through wisdom. Praise the Lord. The revelation here is you have to let wisdom prepare you. Satan hates when anyone leaves a life of slavery. Family, stupidity is slavery. Family, oh God, thank you, Father. Renounce it right now. Say, look, you know what? Do you know the difference between God and us? If we were God, we all would have been dead. But God is merciful, loving. God don't cut your head off because you upset him. He forgives you. And he's patient. But Satan, he hates when you leave his corner. He hates it. He wants everyone to go, you know, where he's going. You know why? He's a slave master. Some of us have been under his mastership and we don't even know it. Why don't we switch partners and go to Jesus, the true master of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Not only is he a slave master, he's a slave driver. Some of us have been told so, much, so many nasty things about ourselves that we believe it. Some of us started with the family when we were kids. The family used to say, you're an ugly kid, you're an ugly kid, you're the milkman's kid, you're the milkman's kid. And you grew up believing that junk. You need to turn around and tell them right now, I ain't the milkman's kid. I'm the kid of, I'm the son of God. And Jesus is my blood brother. Praise the Lord. And because I got wisdom, you are the son of Satan. Or the daughter of Satan. Now go kiss a donkey's butt and get, leave me alone in Jesus' name. And make sure you do this to them. Ah, ah, ah. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen to wisdom. I know who I am. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. I ain't no milkman's kid. But the enemy will do anything he can to keep you in chain, in sin. Do you understand what sin is? Lack of understanding. His greatest fear is that people will be filled with the spirit of sonship and adoption. And then you'll stand up and you'll do like Pastor V says, Abba, Father. Abba, which in Hebrew means Father. Abba, that's what Jesus called him. Abba, he was calling his Father. He will do anything to keep you in slavery, to prevent you from entering your inheritance. Listen, somebody, don't worry about that right now. You better listen to what the Lord is saying. You have not yet received the manifestation of your inheritance. I know. I'm your pastor. We need to get that inheritance now. If you want to see good things happen to this ministry, if you want to see good things happen into your life, ask God to give you your inheritance. I didn't know I had a rich uncle. Ain't got nothing to do with your uncle. Got to do with your rich father in heaven. If he knows that you are real and you're going to help people and you're going to bless others, he'll give you the inheritance. Now it's yours. Praise the Lord. But it starts with you adoring him in the morning. Get intimate with him. Some of us get more intimate with the cell phone than we do with God. You don't have to say amen. I know I'm right. Some of us just, you know, you go to bed with the phone, you get up with the phone. You know, you take a shower and your hands are sticking out and the phone is right there too. Praise the Lord. Phone, 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 phone. Phone. Jesus, he's you. 
There's wisdom inside of you. That wisdom will give you insight and understanding. That wisdom comes to a teachable heart. Right now, you have to renounce your pride. Say, I renounce pride, and Lord, make my heart teachable. I, I'm spiritually hungry. I want wisdom. I'm acquiring wisdom right now in the name of Jesus. Wisdom will give me life. It will give me a healthy heart. Praise God. I pursue wisdom now. Never mind my mistakes of yesterday. It's gone. What matter is now. Wisdom and understanding needs to come to me now. I renounce the position of being a slave. I will not have a slave driver. I will not have a slave master. Jesus is my master. Praise God. Jesus is my master. Gotta get serious. Jesus is my master. I'm a son and daughter of the Most High. I'm a son and daughter of glory. This is understanding. This is awareness. This is wisdom. You ask for it. There it is. Get it. Praise the Lord. I feel it coming into you. It's coming out of me, going into you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. I ask God, God, forgive me when I'm in darkness. You pass everybody here. Say something stupid. Say Think something stupid. Get angry. Perverse talk coming out of your mouth. You're watching things you ain't supposed to be watching. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at the door. And you know what God says? I'm watching you. That's what God's saying. I'm watching you. Your pride, man. Your pride. Let it go. Let it go. Where, is it that, where has this pride taken you? Well, pastor, I am one of the most richest person in the world. <laughs> Not. <laughs> I'm so successful in my family. Everyone in my family loves me. My son, my daughter, my grandkids. Not. You need God's insight. You need God's understanding. Do you know you're a son and daughter of God? According to 1 Corinthians, put it back up there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Daddy Don's laughing because he knows I'm closing y'all. I, I, I didn't have to act like a Baptist and close up five times today. Because the Lord is with me. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. Everybody go up there. I ain't talking about the Baptist. I'm just saying a certain time. There you go again. Instead of you receiving the wisdom and understanding, you're judging me because I said the Baptist. Don't you understand that I gotta, I'm connected up there to heaven? What's wrong with you? When you talk about your God's servant, you're talking about God. Praise the Lord. Just let it go. Yeah, I need to go to a church where they teach me. No, what they're really saying, I need to go somewhere where the Spirit of God is not and it won't offend me. If you read your Bible and you get offended, and when you come to church you get offended, good, God was there. Because the Bible says I'll correct you, and I'll love on you, and I will bless you. But God correct those he loves. We can't, you imagine you let your kids just do whatever they want. Okay, let's close up because I'm about to say something. Thank you so much, viewers. We'll see you real soon. Amen. Let's give God a wonderful hand.